flag downs, what to do if you're on si inside of the ambulance on your way anywhere, whether it's to a hospital, whether it's to get a sandwich, and someone flags you down or you see the need for an ambulance. One night around three in the morning, I'm with my partner and we're transporting a patient from one hospital to the next because that night I was working inter-facility transport. As we're driving, I'm a paramedic, my partner's an EMT, he's in the back because the patient didn't require any ALS interventions. Whenever I work with an EMT, that it's a BLS job, I usually drive and give them the opportunity for the patient exposure. So we're on the highway, and as I'm driving through the highway, I notice that there's an ambulance up the road, up the highway. And this ambulance, for some reason, is a little bit too close to the shoulder of the highway. This is the BQE, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway in New York City, 3 a.m. on a hot summer night. As I approach, I start to notice that the ambulance is about to fall off of the highway pavement into the water. This is right by the Brooklyn Bridge. Look it up by Cadman Plaza. What happened? There's an ambulance in need. I'm with my partner. We have a patient in the back. I don't care. I'm pulling over. They need our help. What did I do? I instructed my partner to stay with the patient. And this is what you should do. When you get a flag down and you have a patient on board, do it the following way. You tell your partner, stay with the patient because if both of you go help, it's patient abandonment. Avoid that. It's not nice to the patient and it can lead you to get into a lot of trouble. So we take the patient or my partner goes and stays with the patient because he had less experience. I'm a 9-1 paramedic with years of experience, who also graduated from medical school and is a medical doctor who's studying for the medical doctor exams, the USMLEs, I think I know what to do. I left my partner with the patient who was in stable condition. I go check out the patient or the ambulance. Luckily, they had no patient on board. But what was crazy was that the EMT partner was in the back sleeping but when, when his partner who was driving kind of like fell asleep, lost control of the ambulance. I'm not sure what it was, but she hit the shoulder, broke the, the divide, the thing that prevents you from falling over and her wheel went over. So it was three wheels on the pavement and one wheel right over the border that if it would have been another wheel, she probably would have tipped over and fell into the water. That happened. I go check her out. She's fine. I go to the back and her partner was sleeping in the stretcher in the back as she was driving to the their pickup location. Very common. If I'm working overnight, what I do is if my partner needs to go to the restroom or something and I'm in the back resting or closing my eyes or just stretching my legs out and my partner wants to go somewhere, I go, I say, go ahead, drive. I'll stay in the back. But he didn't strap himself in. He was sleeping in the back while not strapping himself in and hurt himself and needed stitches on his forehead, if I'm not mistaken. This happened about two years ago. So the lesson for this is if you get a flag down, split up with your partner. Every condition is different. So if it's a mass casualty incident, you might have to not do it the same way I just mentioned. Hopefully you could. But in the ideal situation, you split up with your partner. One of you go treats the patient that's flagging you down. And then after that, you call for additional backup. So you're not going to stay there and play babysit with, with, these, with these additional patients. You have to call for additional backup. You have to close the highway. You have to position the ambulance in such a way where it's not a danger to you, your patient, your new patient, your original patient, your new patients, your partner, and the ambulance. So what I did was I parked the ambulance in such a way where I turned all the lights on, kept them on, turned on all the lights from around the floodlights, and I basically stopped the highway. Like there was traffic, the highway was at a standstill. Not one car I let pass. Not one car until the police officers came, the firefighters came, and additional ambulances came to take over the scene. 
And trust me, people were upset. They were honking. No, we can fit through there. They were honking at three in the morning. I didn't care. Even the cop came and was like, yo, we need to open up the highway. I'm like, it's not, it's not safe yet. We got to wait for the firefighters. So I basically controlled the scene as much as I can, as much as I could. Why? Because it made sense. It was safe for everybody to proceed in that manner. All right, guys? I hope this helps. Peace.